Welcome to another edition of AgriTalks and today I'm coming to you from Cornell University in Ithaca, New York and we're going to have a chance to go and have a look at some of the work being done in genetic engineering at Cornell. It's a leader in terms of pioneering some of the genetic work. Uh, this is one of the old plant science buildings and I'm right on the quad here of, uh, of uh, Ithaca and Cornell and you can see all around me some of the old agricultural buildings that we had here and uh, we're gonna have a really exciting opportunity to have a look at uh, some uh, gene gun technology and learn a little bit more about biogenetics and how that all comes together. I'm looking forward to being here because I get a chance to talk about agriculture and GMOs and genetic engineering and modern farming practices. So stick with me and welcome to another edition of Agritrex uh, from uh, Cornell University. So we're headed to the biotech building here at Cornell University and going to go inside and see some of the technology that they are employing in the realm of genetic engineering. Okay, we're going in with Dr. Hansen here. And we're going in to have a look at a gene gun. It's the first time I've ever seen a gene gun. Let's, let's, this is going to be cool. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm at Cornell University, and this is a gene gun. And it's the first time I've been exposed to one. And uh, what they do here is they use this for the injection of uh, genetic material into uh, chloroplast, and they can also use it for nuclear nucleus injection as well. And the way it works is this is helium, and the helium is used to pressurize uh, a plate. So what they'll do is uh, they have these little plastic discs here that sit above here. Below uh, the discs they would have either gold or tungsten and these particles, small particles, would be imbibed with the genetic material that they want to get in from the donor plant into the host plant. They then slide in petri dishes that have uh, material at the bottom uh, like uh, sucrose or an agar material at the bottom and uh, they, they put that in here uh, along with the genetic material, the, the cells that they're after, and they put that in here and the helium pressurizes these plastic discs to such a point where eventually it just pops out like a balloon expanding and shoots the gold and tungsten particles into the petri dish here and then they'll take that and they'll culture that out and uh, they'll watch that and do tests to determine if they've got the, the genes in the proper area in the proper sequence that they're after. That's how they'll utilize uh, a, a gene gun and this is of course uh, more expensive, uh, a little bit more complex of a procedure than using Agrobacter uh, which is uh, another uh, procedure very commonly used in genetic engineering. So this is the early version of the gene gun and it actually is a gun. They were using, as you can see, a 22 caliber shell and they were uh, shooting uh, the particles uh, using the projectile of a 22 caliber shell uh, to get the uh, particles distributed on the Petri plate. This is uh, so ancient, 1989. I'm in a laboratory here at uh, Cornell University and what we have behind us here is uh, this is the agitation going on with the plant cells and they're just bringing oxygen in to keep the plant cells alive and uh, you're isolating these plant cells to do things like putting into tissue cultures and over here we have a whole variety of tissue cultures that are, are, are growing out and each one of these is growing on some sort of a solution and there might be different treatments underneath there to eventually select out the traits that they're looking for. This is uh, tissue culture technology here. A lot of this is done with gene guns that are actually shooting the genes inside of the, of the cells to give you the result that they're looking for. Uh, part of the preparation and when you're doing genomic sequencing is you have to get the uh, samples ready. This is uh, robotics that are going on here and basically you would take uh, your uh, nucleic material that you've dissolved in a solid and these things basically pick up the nucleic material and then move them into different solutions 
that ultimately would go into a, a, a genomic sequencer. The next step in the process uh, is to basically identify what's going on in terms of the genetic sequence. So if we take my saliva, for example, and put it into a solvent, separate out the nucleic acid, then put it in solutions, these solutions are run through a machine like this aluminum machine, and these things are north of a, of a quarter million dollars. And basically, the material is run through here, and this machine will start to spit out a long list of sequences of A, T, C's, and G's, and you grab all of that information and you can put it into a computer as, as simple as a laptop computer, but if the sequence is large, you need more computing power, and it starts to look for patterns, just like you would search for a word inside of a Word document. The computer then will start to look for the patterns that are really printed out from this machine. Well, that's a wrap from uh, Cornell University. This has been another edition of AgriTrex. I, I sure hope that you uh, enjoyed being in the labs with me and learning more about uh, uh, genetic engineering technology. It's been fun to share that with you. And uh, have a great day, and thanks for being with me on AgriTrex. Yeah.